Dear colleagues and friends, nearly 10 years now we performed the endoscopic transforaminal discectomy in a lumbar disc herniation under an algo sedation and in lateral position in day surgery. In nearly 2000 operations we developed a standard surgical technique, the so-called TESIS technique, uh, which we want to share with you step by step in uh, the next video. The advantages of the lateral position in analgo sedation. The pillow opens up the foramen. The dura falls down to the contralateral side. Reduced intra-abdominal pressure means less bleeding, especially in obese patients. The anesthesiologist is having a better contact with the patient. The straight leg raising test is intraoperative possible. With flexed hips one gets less lordosis. And last but not least, the lateral position is more comfortable for the patient. The patient in this video is a 54 year old man with a disc protrusion L4 L5 on the left side and having complaints during 10 weeks despite conservative treatment. The iliac crest and the middle of the spine is indicated. Orthogonal positioning of the patient on the operation table in two directions is extremely important. We fix the patient with ordinary tape on the operation table with a towel under the waist. With the image intensifier, we check the orthogonal position, if possible in two directions, but at least in the lateral position. First you should draw a line in the direction you like to introduce the needle. Depending on the size of the patient, the needle in a L4, L5 case is introduced between 14 till 11 cm from the middle of the spine. In higher levels you should go closer to the midline. In very heavy patients, it is an advantage to draw the so-called line of arm on the skin. Don't pass this line of arm ventrally. A small piece of the sterile grape is removed to prevent bringing in pieces of plastic in the spinal canal with a reamer later on. The skin is anesthetized. Under image intensifier, the direction of the introduction of the needle is estimated over the isthmus L4, L5 to the upper backside of the fifth vertebral body in lateral position and just medial of the medial interpedicular line in AP view. The needle is introduced over the isthmus of the superior articular process in the right direction and the position is checked in two directions. In the beginning, this might be not easy, but it's essential for the rest of the procedure. A guide wire is then inserted in the needle and the 8 mm incision is made. The needle is removed and over the remaining guide wire, the conical green rod is inserted. After that, we dilate the soft tissues with a green, yellow 
and red conical tube till we feel the bone of the process. The surgeon might feel some resistance of the iliac crest and that might be painful for the patient. Therefore, we inject the periost of the iliac crest in most L4, L5 cases and for sure in L5, S1 cases with a local anesthetic. The conical yellow and red tubes are removed and reaming with a green reamer is started. The reamer is introduced counterclockwise and reaming might cause the patient some discomfort in the buttock and lateral upper leg. We ask the patient to give an immediate reaction in case he feels pain below the knee. Reaming is done in AP view just one or two millimeter medial of the medial interpedicular line. In the beginning, it's important to check frequently. Remove the reamer, but use the stopper to prevent pulling out everything. Introduce the yellow conical tube and introduce again counterclockwise the yellow reamer. After that, the red tube and reamer are introduced in order to remove sufficient bone of the superior articular process to introduce the working cannula. The red reamer is then removed again using the stopper. Check in the beginning frequently the instrument position in two directions with the image intensifier. So successfully with the green, yellow and red reamer, a small piece of superior articular process to a level just medial of the medial interpedicular line over the matching tubes is removed. Then the working cannula can be introduced with the opening upwards at least at the level of the exiting nerve L4 till the level just medial of the medial interpedicular line. Take out the rod and tubes and check the position of the working cannula again. The preparation of the foraminoscope and pump can be done now, including white balance of the scope and leveling of the pump. We see an overview of the foramen. The head is on the right side, the legs on the left. The disc and disc protrusion is in the direction at 12 o'clock and the superior articular process is in the direction of 6 o'clock. First look and identify and expose the upper backside of the vertebral body L5 on the left side. Then expose and identify carefully the exiting nerve root L4 at about 3 o'clock running in the direction of 12 o'clock. Kijken we met een 30 graden scope met een blikhoek van 74 graden omhoog. En in deze positie, u ligt op de rechterzij, is uw hoofd bij 3 uur, dus aan de rechterkant. De benen zijn links. Naar boven toe gaat het richting het voramen. En uiteindelijk uitgang voramen, daar waar de zenuw die door het voramen loopt. Die we hier al zien. Tussen 3 uur en 12 uur. Pull out the cannula and foramenoscope a little and follow and decompress, if necessary, the exiting nerve till it leaves the foramen.
Now we have a clear view of the nerve root L4 till it leaves the foramen laterally. In case of a pure foramenal disc herniation, the job is done. The working cannula and the foramenoscope are turned now 180 degrees. The head is now at the left side on the monitor and the legs are on the right side. The superior articular process is at 12 o'clock and at 6 o'clock and more medial is the direction of the protruding disc or disc herniation. Now the pedicle of L5 should become exposed and then more medially the upper backside of the vertebral body L5 and the border with the disc L4, L5. Small bleedings can be stopped with a radio frequency probe. Here the pedicle, the exiting nerve root L4 and at 12 o'clock the ream bone is seen. Rotate the cannula and foramenoscope when moving along the bone cranially to the exiting nerve. In case you lose the position, go back to the disc and find again the pedicle. Visualize the connecting line between the vertebral bodies L4 and L5. Along the cranial backside of L5 and the caudal backside of L4, the protruding disc material is removed in medial direction. Stay close to the bone so you can't damage the neural structures and move with the foramenoscope a little medially. Sometimes the capsula is hanging down a bit as a curtain. It's obscuring the vision and has to be carefully removed. The disc herniation is removed now most of the time, however we have to remove the degenerated disc protrusion in small pieces.
The decompressed dural sac is moving synchronically with a heartbeat. Small bleeders might be stopped now. With a working cannula and a foramenoscope still in the spinal canal, the straight leg raising test is performed and the patient is not experiencing any pain anymore in the leg. The foramenoscope and working cannula are removed and the wound is closed with an intracutaneous stitch. The patient is transferred to the recovery and discharged home after about two hours after checking his condition. It is very important to make sure during the operation that you can see what you do and that you always know where you are. Of course, it's possible to do the operation in prone position and in general anesthesia with neuromonitoring. I think the lateral position and analogous sedation offers great benefits for both the patient as well as for the surgeon. Because when you come too close to the nerve, the patient will tell you. Before beginning this procedure, I advise you to follow a cadaver workshop and have a look at a few live operations. I wish you a lot of success and great experiences.